And there is Errol Spence. Junior <laughs> Errol, how are you, my man? What's up? I'm doing good. Errol, now let's talk about how life has changed over the past month or two. First of all, uh, how are you, your family, Do anyone that you know, have they been affected by the coronavirus? Uh, nobody's been affected as yet. My family been good. Uh, my daughter's got them with me right now. There's one of them. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I got a lot of family in New York, too. Like my grandmother, she's 96 now. And I got a lot of family in New York. So, uh, you know, I'm wishing them well. And, um, you know, everybody will as we get through this time. Tough time. Now, Errol, how are you? you know, passing the time. I, I mean, can you give us an idea? I mean, I'm sure I've never seen you out of shape in my life over the past, you know, eight, nine years of knowing you. But, you know, how are you maintaining, staying in shape and things along those lines? Oh, um, I've been running. I go to my coach house and we work the mitts and things like that, just me and him one-on-one. And um, basically just running and um, sitting at home, watching a lot of TV, dieting, playing with my kids. Um they're not in school right now, so I'm teaching them different things and, you know, learn their ABCs and one, two, threes and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's been a good time just hanging out with them. But, um, you know, I'm ready to get back in the swing of things and um, get some fights under my belt and get back in it. But it's well, been a good time off, it. too, though, because um, just the recovery time and, um, you know, having my accident in October. So, just been recovering and things like that. But um, I'm fully healthy now and um, – you know, ready to get back in the swing of things. Errol, let's talk about, you know, how you have, how your body's feeling since the accident in October, a, a very, uh, you know, a, a scary time for you. And, and also a lot of fight fans around the world were very concerned about your well-being. How are you feeling physically uh, since the accident in October? Uh, I've been feeling great. I went to, actually been to a Cleveland clinic um, after the uh, Deontay Water fight and went there and they, you know, evaluated me and checked me out, my brain and my, you know, basically everything, my whole body. And, um, you know, they say everything's been, been good and um, I'm recovering well. And I think I'm fully recovered now and they feel like I'm fully recovered. So I'm going to go back and after this all over with and uh, get checked out by them again. And um, hopefully I can fight in September, October, or whenever this, you know, current event is over with, with the coronavirus. Okay, so so now that is, so you're saying that September, October is what you're hearing, or is that what you want? You know, what is the status of you fighting-wise? Hopefully we, we get past this come the summertime. Um, That's what I want. That's what I've been hearing, too. You know, me, and, uh, me and Al have been talking. And, uh, you know, that's something that we're aiming for. We was aiming for July, August, but, you know, this happened. So, you know, we pushed it back. And uh, I'm looking for looking forward to be fighting uh, either September or October. Okay, so now getting back to, to your accident, you know, what did you learn uh, from that in, entire traumatic experience? Because when you go through something that traumatic and, and obviously physically, mentally uh, on your body, you know, how, how did you, how have you responded in, in, in terms of what you've learned since then? Um, you know, that whole accident, you know, put my boxing career in perspective and, um, you know, put my family in perspective and, you know, basically everything. And, um, you know, I'm taking it a lot serious now as far as training, dieting, um, you know, making sure I don't blow up too heavy and weight and things like that. So, you know, it basically put everything in perspective. And I finally, I got a second chance at, you know, basically at living, you know, spending time with my family and my kids and everything like that. So, you know, I ain't have anything set up for them, you know, if I would have, you know, passed away, God forbid, anything would happen to me. I didn't have anything set up for them and things like that. So I made sure, you know, I had everything, get everything set up with them and, um, you know, basically take everything more serious than it is now. And, um, you know, now I'm 100% and, you know, fully focused on boxing and family. Derek James, your trainer, said in an interview that you hit harder now after the accident <laughs> than what you did before. Is that true, Errol? Oh, uh, I'm I'm a little uh, rejuvenated now, and um, you know I'm ready to get back in there. And um, I'm probably hitting hard now because I'm more excited now. And, you know I'm ready to get back in the swing of things. I'm ready to fight, and um, you know I'm actually looking forward to a training camp, and you know looking forward to you know getting in the top shape, and you know looking good, just like how I was when I was five and zero, oh, and I was coming up the ranks, and um, and I didn't have a world title yet, so. You know, it feels real good just to be, you know, 100%, you 
you know, refocus on boxing. What is it like? Because I have watched your progression from being an, Olymp an Olympian in 2012, uh, being a young, hungry contender, calling out everybody under the sun. Now you are the one who is hunted. How is that change been when it comes to mentality wise on your end? Uh, mentality wise, it ain't changed. You can't hunt the hunter. <laughs> 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 so, um, so you know, those same guys, you know, I've been calling out. You know, you know, if they want to fight, and if we're gonna fight, then then it's gonna happen. Then we're gonna fight. Like I said before, those guys are calling me out, but I'm not shying away from Danny Garcia. I'm not shying away from Keith Thurman. I'm not shying away from Terrence Crawford. I'm not shying away from Sean Porter. I mean, like, me and Al have these discussions all the time, and I tell them, like, I, I really want to fight. You know, the guys that I've been wanting to fight, I want to fight. So, you know, hopefully, you know, I'll fight Danny Garcia this year, next year, Pacquiao, maybe Keith Thurman, I don't know. Probably not. I don't really care about him anymore because he didn't give me an opportunity when I wanted it. So I don't care about fighting him. Um, Terrence so you Crawford, don't want to repay the favor. I mean, there was no favor done to you, so why should I do something for him? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I was calling him out, you know, wanting to fight him. And, you know, he didn't he didn't want to give me an opportunity. He didn't want to fight me. So now I don't need him. I don't need him at all. You know, he's not even on my radar. I feel like he's not even on my level, you know, just because he fought Pacquiao. You know, they, they gave him a little bit of kudos. But, you know, I'm looking for big names like Pacquiao, Terrence Crawford, Danny Garcia, you know. So I'm not worried about – I'm not worried about Keith Thurman at all. So you hold two belts within the sanctioning bodies, the, the WBC and, and the IBF. The WBC has come out and stated that Danny Garcia is your number one mandatory. Is that a fight that you want? I mean, does that, does that seem like that is next for Errol Spence Jr.? Um, it's a fight that makes sense. I mean, Danny Garcia, he's a, he's a very, you know, tough fighter. You know, he's a guy he's accomplished a lot in the sport of boxing, that's a fight that really makes sense. So, I mean, it's a fight that can definitely happen next. Well, also, let's talk about another welterweight, a, a legend, an eight-division world champion in Manny Pacquiao. I know that you were in Las Vegas with the rest of us when he fought and defeated Keith Thurman. What is your take on Manny Pacquiao and if a fight with him could be in your future? I mean, Mike, Manny Pacquiao looked great against um, Keith Thurman. I didn't think he was going to look that good. I didn't think he was going to look like that. But, man, he looked great against him. Um, you know, it looked like the Manny Pacquiao of old. Well, not really the Manny Pacquiao of old, but it looked like a shade to him. So, I mean, I feel like I would love to fight Manny Pacquiao. He's a future legend. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a guy that I would love to fight. I mean, he has a belt, too. I would love to get that belt because my goal is to be undisputed welterweight champion of the world. So I would have to fight him to get one of those belts unless he vacated or something like that. So or somebody else beats him. So, I mean, that's a fight that I would love to have. Let's go back a little bit to September of last year, your battle with Sean Porter at Staples Center here in the Los Angeles area. How much fun was that for you? Because there were periods of that fight where you were kind of smiling, and, and, and there are certain guys who love to be in battles. And, and tough fights. I feel like you are one of them. Did you enjoy being involved in that battle in that fight with Sean Porter? Uh, definitely. I told everybody before that fight, I said, you know, I'm going to fight Sean Porter's fight. You know, I'm going to fight him toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I'm going to make it. It's going to be a real hard, grueling fight, and I'm going to fight him just like how he wants to fight me. And um, like I told you, everybody, we're going to take a step backwards. And um, that's what I did. And um, it was a tough fight. It was a fun fight for me. I'm sure it was a pretty fun fight for him. And, uh, you know, if that fight happens again, I, I wouldn't fight him the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Derek James wasn't too happy with you, right? <laughs> I wouldn't fight him the same. But, you know, uh, if that fight happens again, um, you know, I'll be open to it. Like I said, it was it was a great fight. And I think a, a lot of the fans got their money work with that fight, definitely. Well, Staples Center was rocking, especially in that 12th round. Could a rematch with Sean Porter, does that intrigue you? Does that excite you? Is that a possibility for next year? Um, it definitely intrigues me, but it's it's so many fights out there that you know that I have so so many fighters that have yet to beat like Danny Garcia, like Pacquiao, um, like um, who else? Uh, Terrence Crawford. Uh, so many fighters that I have not yet to beat yet. 
And um, you know, Sean Porter kinda goes, you know, back to the back to the other side. So until I beat, you know, Danny Garcia, Tans Crawford, Pacquiao, I doubt that I'll fight Sean Porter again. Well, let's talk about Terrence Crawford because we saw a, a wonderful promotion with Premier Boxing Champions and also a top-ranked TGB promotions as well when they worked on the second Wilder Fury fight. It seemed like Fox and also ESPN, the networks got along. Everyone was working very hard together. How big of a step was that promotion to doing so well and both entities working together to open up the door for you and Terrence Crawford to fight? Uh, it's, it's big. I mean, you know, it, it just has to make sense. Just like Pacquiao and Floyd. Pacquiao and Floyd. I mean, it just has to make sense. It, it got to be, you know, all the money in the pot. And, you know, everybody get their fair share. So as long as it makes sense money-wise and, you know, it's big enough, I think I think the fight will happen. So Terrence Crawford came out in an interview a few weeks ago, Errol, and he said that, yes, the money has to be right and it has to make sense for everyone. What was your interpretation of Terrence Crawford's comments when he talked about the money in, in that regard? I mean, because looking at you and Crawford, you're two of the best welterweights, you know, arguably in the world. And I think the boxing, the fighting public, uh, the sports public would love to see that matchup. Uh, definitely. I mean, I mean, he's telling the truth. I mean, you know, you got to pay us our worth. Cause me and Terrence, we're going to get in there and try to kill each other. So, I mean, you got to pay us our worth. And, um, you know, as long as the money's there, the money's in the pot, and it makes sense, it's definitely going to happen. I mean, I just talked to Al about the fight before. We had uh, numerous discussions about it. And, uh, you know, he said the same thing. You know, when it makes sense, it's going to happen. So, you know, hopefully it can happen next year. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to fight Terrence Crawford. A lot of his fans and uh, people from Omaha and, uh, you know, just, you know, a lot of his fans saying that I'm ducking them. You know, that's not the case at all. I had to FaceTime Terrence Crawford before anyway. We did face FaceTime probably a couple months ago. You know, I talked about the fight and things like that. So, you know, definitely no ducking in in our situation at all. I'm not the type of guy that's going to duck anybody. So, I mean, it's, it's going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. Are you guys friends with or friendly with each other, Errol, or is this more of a mutual respect between two prize fighters that want to prove that they are the best in the world? Uh, it's more of a mutual respect. You know, I feel like, you know, Terrence Crawford, I feel like Terrence Crawford, you know, is really himself. You know, a lot of guys, I just, you know, I, feel, I really don't like them because I feel like they they fake, you know, like, I feel like Keith Thurman fake, so I, I couldn't, I couldn't even, I couldn't call him and have a discussion with him because I feel like he's just a, a fake dude. You know, I feel like sometimes Sean Porter, you know, he just be talking out the side of his mouth, and, um, you know, it's a lot of guys, but, like, guys like Pacquiao and guys like Terrence Crawford, you know, I just feel like, you know, they're real dudes, you know. Danny Garcia, I feel like, you know, he's a genuine guy, too. I done talked to him before and things like that. So, you know, I just feel like we just a mutual respect between between us two. Where would you see uh, in terms of, you know, you're a student of the game, Errol. How do you see a fight like you and Crawford play now? Could it be, you know, we, we hear about the classics in the 80s when everyone fought everybody. Do you think it could go back? to those old school ways when we saw those guys in the eighties, just battling against one another and, you know, topping each other and having these massive events. Yeah. I feel like that's a classic fight. I feel like, you know, that's a, that's a legacy defining fight. You know, I just feel like, you know, um, like, like they, I think they had on YouTube, uh, legendary nights. Legendary nights on YouTube. when they do like a documentary of, uh, Hagler and Hearns or, you know, Ray Leonard and Hearns, or Ray Leonard and Hagler, and things like that. So, and I feel like that's just a legendary fight, a fight that, you know, people talk about, you know, for a long time. You know, I just feel like, you know, and a lot of, you know, young boxers and things like that would definitely, you know, watch that fight and remember that fight because I feel like we both had a skill set, we both had a talent, you know, we both had a will. But, you know, but at the same time, in the day, I feel like I watched Terrence Crawford. You think you'll wash him? Yeah, I feel like I'll I, I beat him. I'll punish him. 
Okay. You, are you looking? Would you be looking for a stoppage then, Arrow? Is that what you're you're telling me that you'd stop him? 